Now, if there's one food I would happily trade for type 2 diabetes, it would be the donut. You fucking donut. Of course you don't. While I was eating my deep fried sugar bombs, it suddenly hit me. Why does the donut have a hole in the middle? I had to get to the bottom of it. So the earliest recipe I could find that resembles a donut comes from the book called The Verstandige Kok, meaning the sensible cook from the year 1669 by a fellow called Peter Rose. This book was written in ancient Dutch, so I took the liberty of using a fast, affordable and high quality translation service called My Bottom. The recipe goes as follows. Take up to half pound of flour. Half a pound of long raisins, when washed, let them swell in lukewarm water. Ahead of the best apples, peel and cut them into chunks, remove the seeds. Some peeled almonds, a stick of cinnamon, a bunch of white ginger, a spoonful of yeast, one fourth pound of melted butter, half pound of lukewarm milk, mix all together until it wraps firmly around the spoon and let it rise. Boil the finest rapeseed oil and add them in. But wait, this doesn't sound anything like a donut. It doesn't even have sugar in it. Well, you're right. But in that time, sugar was such a commodity that desserts didn't contain it. Instead, they would use the natural sugars of the fruits. And that's exactly what we'll use for this recipe. Firstly, you want to add the milk to a bowl and mix the yeast to it. Add the ginger and cinnamon as well and give it a good mix. Continue by adding the melted butter and then the flour one batch at a time in order to avoid having big lumps in the dough. Eventually, you want to have a thick and sticky dough. As the recipe states, it has to wrap firmly around the spoon. Once the dough has the right consistency, go ahead and add the almonds. Mix them well to incorporate it in the dough and then you want to do the same thing for the raisins. Give it a good mix. And lastly, add the apples and mix it as well. Now let's cover the dough with a damp towel and let it rise for at least 30 minutes. While we wait on our dough, let's take a look at how the donut lost its hole. In order to find the origin of the donut, we must first answer the question, what is a donut? Because if it's just any other fried dough, then, well, the possibilities are endless. The Italians have the bomboloni, Germans have the berliner, the French have beignet, and the Japanese, well... You look kind of down, Ash. Huh? Have a donut. That always cheers me up. Pika pika! These donuts are great! Jelly filled are my favorite! Nothing beats a jelly filled donut! Now I might be wrong, but I really don't think these are donuts. But you know what could be considered a donut? The Dutch Olikoek. Olikoeken are considered to be the direct ancestor to the donut we have today and here is why. In the year 1622, the first Dutch settlers traveled from the Netherlands to America and with the mentality of first come first served, they found parts of the city we know now as New York, which then was still called New Amsterdam, which is the capital of the Netherlands. While there is no hard evidence, we know that these settlers made Olikoeken or oil cakes because the recipe we are making today comes from around that time. But it wasn't until 1809 that we saw the terms Olikoeken and donuts being used interchangeably. In fact, we have a satire written by Washington Irving from that time called A History of New York from the beginning of the world to the end of the Dutch dynasty. In his satire, Irving describes the early settlers of New York and what foods they ate. And I quote, An enormous dish of balls of sweetened dough, fried in hog's fats and called doughnuts or Olikoeks, at present scarcely known in the city except in genuine Dutch families. Because of the satire, that last part was probably not true, because by that time donuts or Olikoeks were very popular in New York. Another cookbook from 1803 called The Frugal Housewife has the first written recipe under the conventional name of dough nuts, which was similar to the doughnuts we have today, but without the hole. While it's not quite clear why people started calling Olikoeken donuts, I have a suspicion it was because people were quite literally nuts about this dough. So they started calling them donuts. Whatever the case might have been, it seems that in the early 800s, 
the donut had finally broken free from its Dutch ancestor, the Olikoeken, and was well on its way of becoming a proud American dessert. Or breakfast, if you're really serious about having diabetes. But wait, there's still one problem. Even though donuts became American, it still didn't look like the donuts we have today. So, how did the donut suddenly get a hole in the middle? Now let's be honest. Ball-shaped donuts are freaking boring. That's why the rich people from the 19th century used these dough cutters to create uh, diamond-shaped donuts. Now you might ask, how the hell did they cut diamonds out of dough? Here's the diamond-shaped donut. Not what you expected, huh? All jokes aside though, ball or diamond-shaped, these donuts still had a major flaw. They were generally burnt on the outside, but undercooked in the middle. Why? because the temperature of the oil would burn the outsides before it had time to cook the inside. A solution to this problem was to mix the dough with apples and raisins. So it helped the cooking process and also added flavor. Although an easy fix would have been to, I don't know, geez, maybe just lower the heat. But there was one American who found the permanent solution to this problem. And that American is called Captain Hanson Gregory. The story goes as follows. In 1847, a captain by the name Hanson Gregory went out sailing along with the donuts that his mother Elizabeth had cooked for him. And like many other donuts from that time, the center would of course be raw. The raw dough would be hard to digest for our beloved captain, so Gregory had the epiphany to take the top of a pepper box and cut a hole right through the donut and creating in his own words the first donut hole ever seen by mortal eyes kind of exaggerated if you ask me but oh well another version of the story has him jamming the donut onto one of the spokes of the ship's wheel during a storm because he was using both hands to steer the wheel yeah a bit far-fetched if you ask me now you might think that it's odd that all of these stories happen to be on a ship as if Donuts would be a practical and nutritious food to take on a long sea trip? And you're right, they are not. By the 19th century, donuts were made with milk, yeast, sugar and eggs, all of which were typically unavailable on a ship. But they would still take these ingredients because they were made on a ship as a special reward when the crew gathered a thousand barrels of whale oil. Once they gathered a thousand barrels, the ship's cook would prepare donuts and fry them in whale oil in order to serve them to the crew. In case you didn't know, whale oil has a very off-putting taste and was mainly used to oil up machinery. So it's safe to say that these donuts were probably a bit fishy if you know what I mean. But you know what's not fishy at all? The oil I have heated up for my donuts. In order to form these donuts, all we have to do is take a big scoop of the dough and let them enjoy their jacuzzi. You know we don't have a jacuzzi. Can you believe that? Can you believe we don't have a jacuzzi? If the dough sticks to the spoon by any chance, you can just dip your spoon in the oil and then form the balls. The temperature of the oil should depend on how big you make your balls. For reference, I have mine to around 180 degrees Celsius. Fry them for about 2 minutes on each side and set them aside to cool off. Now before we taste our 17th century donuts, there is still one piece of the puzzle we still need to figure out. We now know where the donut came from and who put the first hole in it, but how did donut suddenly became donut? While it was not sudden, during World War I, Helen Purviance, along with 10 other young females, were attached to the Salvation Army's 1st Division in order to help out the soldiers in any way. Well, maybe not in any way, but Purviance realizes there are just enough ingredients to make donuts, so that's exactly what she did, because uh, why the hell not? It's donuts, it's delicious, and uh, actually the soldiers loved it. It became such a hit that one of the soldiers was quoted, gee, if this is war, let it continue. Um, anyway... Eventually, the World War I ended, but the troops' hunger for donuts did not. So, when they came back home, donut producers could not keep up with the high demands in the country. Seeing this as an opportunity, one entrepreneur by the name Adolf Levitt, an unfortunate but still popular name at that time, founded the first revolutionary donut machine called the wonderful almost human automatic donut machine. Although he could have used some help with that name, he still got the job done. The machine 
could pump up to 1000 donuts an hour and was soon distributed all around America, making him so wealthy that even Jeff Bezos would look like a beggar. But soon, Levitt changed the spelling of donut on his machine to D-O-N-U-T in order to attract foreigners to buy his machines. Although he was not the first to spell donut that way, he was definitely making it popular. In 1929, the Los Angeles Post published an article mocking the decline of spelling by saying they can't swallow the well-done donut nor the ever-so-good bread. By the 1950s, new donut shops were emerging left and right and some brands used the new spelling of the word, resulting in the ever-increasing popularity of the new spelling of donuts. With that being said, I can't help but wonder how our dough nut will fare against the donut. Before tasting though, I would suggest to sprinkle a bit of sugar on the donuts because they can taste a bit bland even with the fruits and nuts inside. Hmm, these taste actually quite similar to donuts. It has less sugar, that's for sure, but it, the texture is quite the same. It's not as sweet as the donuts we have today, but it's similar in taste. It just lacks the sugar. so. It really helps if you put a lot of sugar on it, but I must say, I really enjoy the almonds and raisins in it. I think it really boosts up the flavor. Anyway guys, if you've made it this far, that's actually pretty crazy. If you enjoyed the content, please make sure to like the video and subscribe if you will. If not, I will try harder next time.